Marymount, Ohio, a quaint town of about 4,000, is home to three pizzerias, a premier ice cream parlor, and a world-class tennis facility. Our story begins with the Marymount Junior High Tennis Program, where caterpillars turn into butterflies and legends are made. Molded by the careful hands of the late John Walbacher and Tracy Glassmeyer, the offspring are primed for their rigorous throws of the high school coaches, Lane Merton and Cindy Chalfont. Initially, the fledglings are bussed out to Mercy Healthplex to be groomed by resident pro Jerry Howard. We're filming. We're filming? Yeah, Brad, you can adjust the tripod if you want to. What is up, guys? It's Bradley. So we're on our way to Mercy Healthplex right now, and we will be playing tennis. Bradley Barrett, freshman in college. Brad Barrett. Be Brad Barrett, great kid. Brad Barrett. Barrett is just Barrett, so you, you gotta love him. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I am probably a better tennis player than Bradley. Like he wasn't even at our varsity matches, and we'd still say Barrett, just cause. And um, yeah, you just gotta love the kid. Uh, he's upstairs right now. I haven't seen him in a while, and I'm kind of getting antsy about it. I miss his goofiness, his shenanigizing. Oh! Oh! Yeah! It's all about keeping your composure. Right. You don't want to go into coffee. When I think Mercy Healthplex, I think Jerry Howard, and Jerry Howard is just a phenomenal human being. You can't get too nostalgic. We haven't hit a ball yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that first day of practice. <laughs> he he really is a he's really a fatherly figure. He's uh he's my mentor, my tennis mentor for sure. Um, really looked up to him. I feel like a lot of us did. Jerry was a lot of fun. I mean, just him as a coach, a lot more like advanced training, I guess. So it got me prepared for the season. Uh, do you have any words about the beginning of the season, working with Jerry? Um, I do. <laughs> My name's Andrew Branzer, and I'm a senior. Andrew Branzer. Branzer? Andrew Branzer. He's uh, very athletic. Uh, being able to make varsity his first year ever playing tennis was pretty impressive. He was my doubles partner last year. Uh, lead weight, if you ask me. But Andrew's aggressive net play really got Lane's attention. Yeah, the two-handed smash. Jerry and Lane really got into that. It was Jerry who first, I think, yeah. kind of called him out on it, and Lane was like, wow. All right, keep it going, Jerry. It's racist. My name is Timothy Spath, and I was a uh, junior. Uh, Tim. Timothy Spath. Yeah, Tim's a character. He always crack the jokes at practice. Lighthearted guy, keeps the energy high, high-paced, happy guy, little little guy too. He, he's like, he plays like a, a hit back, whatever those are called. You hit a Tim, he's gonna return it. He won't hit it hard, but it'll be back. And you'll make the mistake. Uh, I like to call a uh, big T. It's pretty fun saying like, big T! Or stuff like that, just yelling it out, especially when he's on the court. 
if I saw him in the hall, sometimes I'd give him a little trip. He'd say, I was about to get really mad, but then I saw it was you. He's probably one of my top eight friends. So it was the spring of freshman year when I first started playing tennis. This time around, I took it a little bit more seriously. So I think I felt like a little bit better and I felt like I was like, you know, like more accomplished than previously. There were too many, like, too many freshmen. I don't know, I kind of wanted some of them to get cut or something, because you know, some of the kids that came out were just beyond awful. Like, they had no hand-eye coordination. It's pretty you guys are part of a tremendous tennis tradition. Marymount High School has always fielded top teams, and your history, your tradition, is an important thing for you guys to embrace. Uh, take pride in being a Marymount Warrior. It's a great tennis program. Know that when you play high school tennis, you are not playing individually. You represent your school, you represent your teachers, your friends, and you represent the community of Marymount. So do it with pride, do it with dignity. Before, I was pretty rusty, because I hadn't played in a while. But I think Jerry uh, uh, got me back to where I was. I think it definitely set me in the right direction to start the season. I just throw everything I learned straight out the window after I leave that building. I predicted as we left Mercy Healthplex, we would have the best year in school history. Coach, what are your thoughts about the uh, about the new players? How are they doing out here today? Oh, yeah, new players are doing really great. Spins. I what? Know everybody's it's for a while, right? being real troopers since it's 40 degrees and cloudy and we're freezing, but everybody's out there being enthusiastic and playing hard. What I think we're going to do is we're going to have um, two teams, uh, two JV teams. A, a JV team and a BJV team. Every single Marymount sport I've played, there hasn't been like significant like actual cutting, which I like think is I understand why not, but I also think that it's like it's kind of just how it is. If you get cut, you should get better. The the idea is nice because you think that you know if you get cut, you know you'll be sad or whatever. But I mean, I think what what happened was not a better alternative because you ended up having a team of the JVA and a JVB and the people in the JVB team just didn't show up to practices. And it just made it worse for the other kids that decided to stay on. We lost um, one of our matches um, because none of the JVB players showed up. Harrison's supposed to be walking the park and they, nobody shows up when we have to forfeit, so that was frustrating. All the guys on JVEA, sure, they all wanted to be there. They all wanted to play. They were all competitive. But everybody on JVB did not want to be there, except for, obviously, Brad Barrett. I ended up playing JVB. So <laughs> when we would have JVB practice, it would be literally like me and two other people. My name is Logan Campbell. I just graduated from Marymount High School. I'm going to be a freshman at uh, Furman University. Logan. It's Loganza. Logan. Yeah, he's my neighbor. Um, we used to hang out like all the time. He's been a good friend to me. Um, I don't know, I've enjoyed being close with him. We were doubles partners last year. We played very well together. We have very similar body types. He gets a little frustrated if we're not playing well. <laughs> That's a little intimidating, but we normally won. And we won the one match we played this year, and I just love playing with him. Logan 100% should be on varsity. And he just gets in his own head and tells him that he's not good enough or something, I don't know. but. He definitely is good enough to be on varsity, and I think he's really good at like doubles and such, and if he played, he would have definitely been in the starting lineup. I think I told Merton, like, hey, just so you know, you don't have to worry about me when you're figuring out the whole varsity thing, because um, I want to be on JV. And she was she was surprised. This is Merton. What are your thoughts about the Seven Hills match next week? Well, I, I will tell you that I'm really thrilled about our team this year because I feel like we have an enormous amount of depth, especially in our doubles. 
and um, I'm I'm always optimistic and it's a good first match for us because it kind of shows us what's out there. I like Mrs. Martin. Uh, sometimes we have our differences and we still don't really agree on them, but it's okay. She's not really like the coach type. She's more of like a mom of the team. I've uh, grown to like her over the four years I've been with her. I know her outside uh, the season. She had already befriended both my grandparents, so I had that connection. Um, very kind woman, you know, very, um, conservative in her ways, you know. She was very stern, like, you know, having clean language, clean conversation, having a good old-fashioned time. Like, it was, I mean, it was nice. Mrs. Merton, um, I, th I think uh, she appreciated me a little bit more this year, you know. Uh, uh, sophomore year, I uh, really pissed her off. I w went up to her and said, like, uh, sub dog. That didn't go down too well. I, I was just trying to be friendly, you know. She's pretty laid back, I'd say. She gives a lot of the same advice. Um, good advice? Yeah, I mean, it, it is good advice. It just, yeah, the general lob the weaker player's backhand. Lobbing to the backhand. Lob it over their backhand. She will tell me pretty much every match to be more, to play less defensive and play more offensive. Um, most of the time I would push it aside because the whole season I would play uh, pretty defensive and play consistently, which helped me win. So I felt like if I changed that, I might lose. What, what was your record? Overall, uh, no. 10 and 2. Let's take them back to 1982 just quickly. I came into this world and my mom thought. The van. That's the best part of the season. It would be a rapist van, except it says Marymount Warriors on the side, I think, or Marymount City Schools or something. But if it didn't have that, I, we, the cops would have been called. King of the cards, king of the castle, king of the barstool, light bulb, nobody thinks he's an asshole, pass the parcel to Jimmy. Everybody pass quicker than getting off of the glass of kill Kenny, if anything. Jimmy's a man of the millennium, no two men can better him, not even Lenny and Carl. Tick infested. Um, if you open the the air, the vents, you can see like candy wrappers stuffed in there above like this ceiling. Um, I think like maybe 75% of the seatbelts work. But other than that, it's a great time. I wish we took the big van. Like, does JV take the big van? I, I'm not familiar with the van the varsity takes, but uh, the van we we have is uh, pretty nice. I think they got it last year, maybe. But uh, yeah, it's like it's pretty it's pretty modern. Well, that's not fair. And Mrs. Merton should learn to drive that one. Well, Coach, she can text and drive that machine. Sometimes she would ask us if it's okay to merge lanes. That kind of scared me. I've never, I've never seen her do that. I've, I've never seen her do that. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think she may be like a professional driver in her spare time. Because I mean, she's, she's talented. All right, are we ready? Yeah, it's probably good enough. <laughs> People are passing around snacks and. Uh, basically just talking and it's, it's like just talking pretty loud it's really fun but the best part is when Mrs. Merton is like backing up and Mark Andrews will go like whoa uh honestly I'm scared a lot of the time I think I don't think she checks when she switches lanes I think she just goes it's all about taking risks she does the best she can but it's hard to drive it's being in the van is probably more fun than the actual match. I mean, just so many memories are created in the van. Bye. Okay, guys, here we are, the first brand, uh, van ride of the season.
When I found out it was Seven Hills, I was like, oh, that's not very good. Worth it. Are you ready to come out here and smoke their second single scout today? I'm going to do my best. I'm Mark Andrews. I'm going into my senior year. Mark. 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 And I know people say like, oh, wow, you're cool. He is the coolest person I have ever met. He's just like, he's cool, you know? That That's all. Mark also was like, um... I don't know, he's always there. His brother was there a long time before him, and so, like, the Andrews tennis legacy is still going strong. He is the king of defense. He, uh, not a very hard hitter, but he could get the ball back, and he made it look nice. Played really well um, from what I saw, so I'm proud of him. Um, hopefully he'll battle for that first single spot um, next year. So yeah, following in Carter's footsteps. If not, maybe better than Carter, if I'm, I'll be honest with you. I knew they were pretty good. Um, so I didn't think I was gonna win. Any match where I think we're gonna lose, I'm fairly certain I have the mindset we're gonna lose. But uh, these guys, well, after we started hitting a few points, uh, I definitely thought we had a little chance to get a few games off them and not just get smoked. Well, my partner, who won't really be named here, didn't really want to play with me because he thought I was bad. And then in the first match, he kept criticizing me when he was making a lot of the errors too. So it wasn't a fun match. Bro, what are they doing over there? It's a warm up, bro. They're warming up. They, warm up. they have an actual That's warm up. It means they suck. And we lost. I was uh, frustrated, I guess, that we lost. Um, I definitely don't think I handled myself very well. Not that I was, you know, obnoxious or anything. I just kind of silent. I didn't really talk to my partner that much. Kind of. My dad was there to watch, and so I just kind of sat, sat in the car with him, watched till Mark's match was over. I was pretty excited because I won in three sets, which was pretty fun. It was really tiring, but although the rest of the team lost, I was I was still happy. Oh, that boy, Mark. Not the net. Mark, Mark, Mark. Nut. This is Merton dying over there. She's freezing her hands off. She had to bring the oven mitts. Come on, Wack. Come on, Wack. I made a fifty dollar bet that we wouldn't go five zero. Or get five zero. We can't lose our mental. Get dog me out. Let's go, Mark. Out of boy. Out of boy. So match point. Point. Match point number three. Yeah, hey, all right, Mark. We just Go lost. Mark. That's right, boys. That's a game. <laughs> That's a dub. All right. That's a victory royale. <laughs> yeah, Mark. You're so handsome. So the my opponent was named Vito, um, and I guess the rest of the team and his dad would yeah, say like, "Good job, Vito." Stuff like that, they would yell at his name, which was pretty funny. So they, my team just started calling me that. The Vito thing was really funny, and that was the highlight of that uh, that entire trip there. All 
All right. You're my best friend. Ooh, you're making me right now. Okay. I'm Jackson Northrup, and I'm a senior. Jackson. Jackson Northrup. Jackson. Really not a positive guy. <laughs> he just tries to put you down whenever he can. He used to have a good serve, but boy, has it declined. <laughs> Wears a backwards hat when he plays too, and he lost the two freshman rally. He was wearing it. Pretty embarrassing. Uh, the whiner. Great. Ms. Merton did a sign to get him to stop whining and stuff. Before we ever played tennis, he was always the best one in our friend group to play. He was like the guy you wanted to double up with. I saw him working at Ace Hardware. Good, good job, I think. Uh, the Madeira match. Andrew and I had a dispute with the two kids we were playing at the end of the first set. We had won, and we were discussing, we always do this out loud because some kids debate this. So we're switching and we're talking loudly, or louder than normal so they can hear us about, you know, I, they're like us acknowledging that, you know, I served the last game, but since it's a new set, I'm gonna serve again. And so we did that, and then the Vidira guys called us out on it, and we were like, we could have just switched like right then and be like, okay, because it would have been fine. Um, but we were just like, knowing us, we had to prove ourselves right. And so we go ask, we're like, okay, like we'll go ask the coach. And we asked the Madeira coach and he goes, mm, no. And, and Andrew and I were like, can we ask our coach? And we, she was like, yeah. And so we went over there, got Mrs. Merton. And she goes up to the other coach and she's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I guess you can. He's like, no, I don't think you can. And we waited for her, couldn't, we took too long, so Andrew just served anyways. We went back and told her like, hey, are we allowed to switch serves? These kids are saying, we're well, not. It's like, yeah, of course you can. She's like, well, the Madeira coach thinks otherwise. So she had a little, after, as we started playing, she had a little confrontation with their coach and eventually called our Pro and trusty Jerry Howard that indeed confirmed that it was it's it's allowed. But other than that, I mean, the kids were nice. Definitely wanted to win, but they couldn't. And yeah, a singles match, Marymount Courts. I dominate the first set. I'm up probably four zero in the second set. He comes back and wins. We go to a tiebreaker. He's up 2-0, and I, I have no momentum. He's made a huge comeback. And then I start winning a couple points. We keep going back and forth. He hits it long. Wasn't sure if it was out or not. I call out. I win. I go up to the net. I say, hey, you're pretty good at comebacks, my man. He just shakes my hand and walks away all mad. The Madeira match. Uh, I mean, they were they were great kids. Uh, one of them I played last year, so uh, I don't know. We were just kind of getting off well, you know. We were, they were beyond awful, so we kind of just messed around, you know. And uh, we were like still murdering them. I'm pretty sure. Like we were about to win, and then we just started getting yelled at for messing around. But I mean, it was it was a really good time. One of the top matches of the year for sure. My motto's always been when it's right, it's right. Why wait until the middle of a cold, dark night? When everything's a little clearer in the light of day. And we know the night is always going to be here anyway. Afternoon 
A typical Marymount tennis practice. People usually show up between 3.15 and 3.35. Like, Joe and I would get there, then Josh, then Andrew and Jackson, and then like everybody else would sort of filter on in. And usually Matt tries to rally people up to run. We'd run two times around, or, no, sorry, clockwise, and then, like, two times around the courts, and then people would skip the whole time and throw balls at each other. It was, it was pretty good. And then we stretch, which is pretty interesting, usually. Hey, this year we started stretching, which I think is pretty important. Mm -hmm. We do the stretches, which were very important. You know, you need them. I mean, the years prior, we didn't have a record for best season. This year we started stretching and we had our best season ever, so I don't know. Then we'll break off. Obviously, varsity's on the top courts, JV's in the bottom. JV would go. We'd probably meet in this little like circle, you know, uh, talk talk about things for a little bit. Uh, honestly, I feel like there was no direction after that. You know, we kind of just messed around for the whole practice. M Mrs. Merton delegates randomly, basically, who plays each other, and then we play a match and then get through like half of another one. We do some serving drills, then she'd say, what do you guys want to do? And we wouldn't know. And then we'd break into some doubles with her being the fourth. Honestly, you could do whatever you want. Play whoever you want. Uh, it's not very serious at all. It's more just have fun. Afternoon delight. The Coach's Classic is a tournament that we play where, against like teams in our area. Coach's Classic is, um, well for me, being on JV, it's our sectionals. Um, coaches come together a week before the tournament and like decide what flight we're going to be flight, as in like division. If you're in flight A, you're, the be you're one of the best teams in the uh, the region, um, six teams that go in in each flight, five or six teams, and then once you get there and stuff, you all play, and then uh, yeah, it's just turn bracket bracket tournament style. Um, it's like kind of mid season before uh, sectionals. You kind of get some good practice against teams you might not regularly play, um, but it's like during prom week, so that's also it's always a conflict. And I went and played some kid from Seven Hills. This kid's picking in his nose, you know. Uh, I play him, and he just returns every single shot, but no killer shot. So I just get frustrated. Uh, eventually leads to me throwing my racket. Uh, Merton gets pissed. She deducts me some points, uh, you know, which I kind of feel violated there, you know. I thought we were kind of closer than that, but clearly not. And it wasn't really a real racket throw. It was kind of like a, a toss. So, I mean, it was kind of funny though. At least I'm not, I wasn't Cammy Steves. I didn't, it didn't break. Uh, I think I could have picked up that first dub, but I kind of blew it, you know. Uh, we, I'm pretty sure we finished second. Um, if I hadn't lost both of my matches, we probably would have won. So, you can blame me for that. Last year was really easy, but this year it got a little tougher. It was still pretty easy. I played uh, one pretty good guy. The rest were not very good. Um, I'd say most of the schools that we that are in our group are below us and aren't as good as us. Maybe there's one or two that are on the same level as us. Oh, I see you weave doing cool racket tricks over there for the camera. You would. Oh, ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, would you like me to get like straight to the abuse or lead up to it? Oliver Timothy Peterman, I am a sophomore. Oliver Peterman. Weeb. The weeb. Skillet. We like to call him Skillet. I don't know where it came from, but it's fun to say. Just. Me and Ollie kind of knew each other from our brothers. When we first, we were paired up as doubles partners. Oliver immediately didn't want to play doubles. He wanted to play singles. Um, but he was stuck with me. And he was like a freshman, so he didn't really say anything. Until the end of the year, he got vocal about it. Funny guy. Wit, real witty, um, 
cracks a couple funny jokes here and there. Always say hi to him in the hallway. It's like Kobe talking to somebody and I'll interrupt. What's up, weeb? Or skillet? And he'll go, ah. <laughs> Just love, love, love that about him. He always goes like this. Anyone admit it. But he always does it. Uh, he goes like this a lot, which is very funny. Fun to watch. He's good at tennis. Um, uh, before the season, I was I was actually worried that he was he was gonna be uh, he was gonna take my spot at second singles, because um, he is a very good player. He likes PUBG more than Fortnite. Loves PUBG, which I don't understand. But I also haven't played the game, so I can't say it's bad. But Fortnite's a hell of a game. But he does not like it at all, which. So yeah, we had a little beef over that, but funny guy. I felt some sort of connection with him in a way. I understood him. Uh, I feel like I can, I, by connected not, I mean like more I understand him. And he has a humor that really appeals to me. Snacks are very important as we eat around 11 and the matches are at like four. And I'm always super hungry. Whenever anybody brings cheese, I have like five bits of it. It's really, I, I like, I just love that kind of thing. My house is not furnished with very good snacks, in my opinion. I sometimes don't have good snacks at home, so I would rely on the snacks before the match, uh, especially when Jackson Comer is in charge of snacks because they were amazing. Nothing would make me more mad than when someone brought water and granola bars because who likes that? Not me. My favorite part about snacks is taking the trail mix and picking out the raisins and giving them to Oliver and I'll eat the rest. 60% of the time, the snack's delivered. Cookie cake. Fruits, fresh fruits or sweets. Cosmic brownies. Cheese, it's little bites. Chips and like cheese sticks and stuff. Zebra cakes. Popcorn. Ice cream, if you can get it there. Probably apples. There's a nice assortment of things that weren't, you know, all just like, here's an orange. Like, it's, you had some good shit. Pardon my language. But it's very important, and I'd pro and like everybody would probably lose if they weren't full. I don't think many people pay much attention to the tennis team. We're not on the announcements after every match, like the lacrosse teams are. I just think that's bullshit, because you're. I was in charge of the announcements. <laughs> And I thought about throwing some stuff in there after a nice win, but then I thought, stick to the script. <laughs> I, w I would say no. However, like when you really think about it, do we really deserve the respect? So that's, that's all I have to say. Also, we're not asking for it. Like I, I don't feel disrespected by the school, but like they definitely tweet about like lacrosse. I don't, I, I don't know the last time we've gotten like a tennis tweet, except for like a mention that like we won something, you know what I mean? Like Brad was saying earlier, we, he, he wants to say stuff about the tennis team, but they don't. Tom Darrell's priority is the, are the sports that he can bring money in from, and that's football, boys and girls lacrosse, um, maybe some baseball games here and there. I don't think people acknowledge us. We usually don't get many people at our matches. Um, I think, I think people would have fun if they came to our matches. On senior night, Danielle came for me to watch me play, and Cassidy watched a little bit of my matches. Cassidy and Danielle. Robert Kerr, 
Summit's a prized possession, obviously. So are you relieved after not having to play Marymount last week, the Marymount machine? I was excited. I sent a Snapchat to the boys at 1 in the morning saying, we ready to eat. Mm. We were hungry. So what are your thoughts looking forward at the rescheduled match? Are you still very afraid of uh, your match? I don't know, I'm disappointed. Charlie and I won't be able to play doubles together and kick Andrews, but... I do know a couple players on the Summit Varsity team. I know Charlie Ferguson and Robert Kerr. So we played my, uh, our good friend Charlie Ferguson and his partner. His partner was very, very good. Uh, Charlie was not so much. But um, he had the wonderful talent of getting inside of our heads and then having his partner exploit that. And that, that caused us to lose. It was embarrassing. Yeah. And I, I think it was attributed to Charlie kind of getting in our heads because we were able to be like, you know, a little more fun, a little more loose because we knew him. And so we laughed a few times, but I don't know. It, it definitely should have been a win because in my opinion, Andrew and I are both better than Charlie and probably better than the other kid, but we lost anyways. Yes, I knew um, Robert, Robert Kerr, who played Josh. Um, he's a very good tennis player, but hadn't seen the likes of the backboard that is Josh yet. So that frustrated him and lost him his match. I think he really lets his mind get to him um, in matches. Like when he played Josh, like he's definitely better than Josh. But Josh is like most people. Like most people but Josh, even though he never tries to get in your head, he still manages to. And it really got to Robert. And Ro like Robert, like started messing up and then eventually lost. And any, just any thoughts in general about the Marymount's tennis program? Trash. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, when is our match game rescheduled to? Next week. Next week? Talk to me then. Oh, to right, me big then. bets, big bets. <laughs> um, yes, if he, ha if he was talking shit about our team and then he started losing, that def he definitely would have played way worse. Poor little boy on the walk. Hey, buddy, you need you need a ride? Um, sure. Yeah. Oh, come on in. Come on in. Last year's sectionals, it was inside. wasn't very. There weren't like too many courts to play on, and um, it was kind of just long. It was not that enjoyable. And Oliver and I played two good squads. And we beat both of them. So that was, I actually really liked that. We had to play two tough matches and we won both, and that felt good. Like, I think we won three matches, lost the fourth maybe. Maybe it was like a little bit less, I don't remember. But I, we won a couple at least. And it was really fun until we played these like insane people. Last year, I, I forget if I won a match and then lost or lost my first match. But we played in indoor courts, which was pretty fun because there was ping pong. Well, when I found out that it was going to be played at ATP, I was pretty excited because um, I thought that would have been a lot of fun, especially if I, if I got to play on center court. So I'm taking the AP government class exam, and I don't think I'm going, but then they finish the exam, and they're telling the teacher I'm going with you guys. So then I say, you know what, why not go, get out of school early, even though it's like our last Tuesday, and I felt kind of sad about that. And we get on the road. I'm all worried about driving and getting food. We stop at everyone's house. We go to Noodles and Company. Why not, right? And then I order the Buffalo Mac. So does Jackson. What are you thinking, Jackson? Brad, what are you going to get? Barbecue pork yeah, Mac. That's, I knew it. That's it. And we eat it there. I pour barbecue seasoning into my drink and drink it. What? Hey, I'll do something for the vlog. Which one do you want me 
Put it in someone's drink. The NSO sauce. Oh, and now put it in your your high C. Oh, you're not gonna make me do this. Oh, you? come on. Come on. Come on. Do this. Oh, that was a lot, Brad. I'm gonna slurp it right from the top. I'm not going to the bottom. That's gross. Ew. And. We get back on the road because Coach Merton and Joe Alcala are calling Matthew like crazy. And then when we get there, Coach Merton's waiting at the gate for us. We walk in. I expect to see like food trucks and a ton of people in center court. We can't even get on center court because construction. And I'm super bored the entire time, kind of. We try to make a podcast, but Matthew's mic breaks on us. We're going. We are live. Right. Uh, welcome here to we ESPN podcast Broadcasting. Going. With me today, we have Oliver Peterman and Brad Barrett. And behind us, we have our legendary duo partner, Joe Collin. And Matthew Blake. What a serve by oh, Joe Collin. Right up. That's an ace. And just watching tennis in this scorching hot with Oliver and Christian. We had this awesome trick shot. Christian hit it. I recorded. Uh, it took us about half an hour, but it was definitely worth it. I need a little zoom on when I guess up here. Man, you got a camera, man. Oh. Hold it. Hold on. <laughs> 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 Everyone sucked and lost. And I lost first round because she she told me like that she hyped me up a lot. She put me as I think the third seed in the tournament or something, which I did not, I did not deserve because I was not the third best player in the tournament. But I think she had too much confidence in me. I played uh, Indian Hills, one of Indian Hills players. I played a really well first, first set. I won the first set. I forget the score, but, and then I just lost it. My head started hurting, it was, it was rough. I saw Jackson and Andrew as two freshmen. How embarrassing is that? I thought Jackson and I could um, possibly make it to districts. Um, I knew we weren't going to win state or anything, but that would have been cool if we made it districts. And we played, so we played two pretty bad teams, and that wasn't like that wasn't very enjoyable because they were not that good. And then we had to play a very good duo of um, two freshmen from Indian Hill. I'd never broken a string. And for the first time ever, we were playing Indian Hill, and we were, I was hitting the ball pretty hard, but consistently, and I broke a string. Never happened before. And they, we won, we lost 6-3, six, six, or we lost 3-6, three, 3-6. Six, three, six. And potentially if we had played better people beforehand, we could have been a little bit more ready, but I thought we played well for playing against them. Andrew and I were playing some of our, some, some pretty good tennis. Um, but it was frustrating because I broke my string and then it all just kind of went downhill from there. Not that like that would have, that was a deciding factor, but I mean, I definitely felt we could have won a few more games if that hadn't happened. Cam got 6-0, 6-0, -0, but I was there for support and I think I did my part and I was in the team photo. Ollie, how'd we play today? I don't know, man. A lot of tough moves, a lot of tough players. You know, I just couldn't cut it. Couldn't cut it. Could not cut right. it. How'd you play? Final cut. It I was played not. Final uh, cut. Good in the first show? set. Wasn't a mark. Not too good in the second two. <laughs> Andrew, how'd you play, huh? Ooh. I played great. And what happened? <laughs> like Jackson happened. Oh, oh wow. I, I'm gonna disagree with that. I just played three tennis matches, so I wasn't really, like, at that time, sad that I wasn't going to be playing any more tennis matches. At the time, I don't think I really thought about it. I mean, now, it's kind of weird thinking about it, I guess. So I guess I'm a little nostalgic, but, um, and sad. Um, but I mean, at the time, I, I just was kind of like, I had fun. I drove up with my friends, I didn't have to have up with the coach. You know, it was it was just a good time. This is it, Mrs. Just, Martin's last film. See, thank you, Mrs. Martin. Party is over. <laughs> Do you have any parting words? <laughs> um, I'm just real proud of all of you guys. Your team.
10 4. Even Joe? 10 Is that our best record ever? It's ever. Ever? ever. We're the best man at Tennessee in history. That's it. Sign off, Mrs. Merton. Sayonara. <laughs> Matt did some donuts in the driving range right outside Kings Island. Jackson recorded play the play the footage. <laughs> Don't say it's over. That's the worst news I could hear, I swear that I will. I think it'll definitely be a lot different because there are a lot of seniors this year who I looked up to. Um, next year I have to be the role model, which is going to be tough, but I'm excited. I can't really imagine it, you know. I'll miss, I'll miss all of the uh, var varsity seniors. Logan and Brad, special, special mentions, you know. B. Red Barrett, great kid. Fantastic person, very interesting, and then Logan, you know, known each other for years. So I mean, it'll th there'll be a few if tears that will come out, but uh, I think I'll get over it. That's the first thing I would do. I swear that I would do my best to follow through. Come up with I never really enjoyed team sports besides like baseball when I was little and junior high. It was kind of like it was kind of like building up to the big team sport of high school tennis and I thought it was just a really good time to get to know everybody and have fun. Uh, I mean I, I'm a part of it just to have fun you know. It's a, it's a good sport, good people. I'm out there to have fun. Uh, take it a little serious but not really serious you know. That, that's pretty much why. I didn't want to play lacrosse and I, I needed to play a spring sport because I wasn't just going to sit around on my ass playing video games all the time. So I had to do something and um, I thought about tennis. Jackson and my mom obviously um, got me into it. So um, I went with it and loved it. Um, don't regret it at all. It's, I th honestly, I, I think I made the right choice playing both golf and um, tennis. To, um, Seemingly boring sports were super fun. My parents are big on my brothers and I playing two sports a year. It doesn't matter which ones, just that you play a sport. And I really never understood that because I was just like, I can get exercise doing other things. But I think I realize the importance now that. Um, being a part of a team is is kind of it's an experience that you can't just have or that you can't do on your own, you know. Obviously, um, it's it's something, especially that it grows over four years. You know, it's it's a development process, and I think it's I definitely think it it was important that I had that in my life. So, and I'm glad to say I had it. Ass is digi, the schedule's busy. My head in the hoodie, my shorty a goodie. My cousins are crazy, my cousins like boogie. Life is amazing, it is what it should be. Been here for ten, but I feel like a rookie. I told her look up, cause it's no one in tussies. Book for three years, man, you can't even book me. It's me and little baby, this shit going crazy. Weezy producing, Weezy have made me, and she hold it down, so she got a Mercedes. Make money records, the army, the navy. They ran me ten thousand, I threw it like Brady. The foreign is yellow, and Tracy and KD. I trust my cause they never betray me. Met all these. So they sweeter than Sadie. When I started out, I just took what they gave me. Brand new whip, got no keys. Tell them my clothes, no starch, please. Soon as I nut, you can go leave. Got M's in the bank, like, yes, indeed. 
Cartier glasses, I won't even Pikachu. Yellow Ferrari like Pikachu, I got him waiting and watching what he gonna do. Trying to peep what I do, trying to steal my first. <laughs> 2500 for a new pair of tennis shoes. Same price, I can make them youngs come and finish you. Larry Ben charging here, Jewish like voodoo. The real dark boy, 100,000 in the